It's the beginning of a holiday week, but things don't seem to be slowing down in Washington. President Trump began Monday morning by going after Oakland Raiders players Marshawn Lynch on Twitter. He called on the NFL to suspend the running back for not standing during the national anthem. Later, Mr. Trump announced that his administration is putting North Korea back on the list of state sponsors of terrorism. This announcement happened during his first cabinet meeting since returning from his 12-day trip to Asia. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen said she will leave the bank's board after Jerome Powell replaces her as chairman. A second woman came forward accusing Minnesota Democratic Senator Al Franken of sexual harassment. And the White House repeated its call for the people of Alabama to decide who they want their next senator to be when asked about allegations against Republican Roy Moore. CBS News contributor and congressional reporter for The Washington Post, Ed O'Keefe, is in Washington. All right, so Ed, let's start with North Korea. How are lawmakers reacting to this news? Do they support the president's move? Uh, there seems to be bipartisan agreement uh, in this decision. I think there's an understanding at this point that they're at, at a point with, South, uh, with North Korea where this makes sense. Uh, obviously, there are others who are concerned that this could be a step too far and could provoke the North Koreans. But uh, for the most part, an understanding that this was coming, given how the North Koreans have been behaving in recent years. Well, when asked again about Alabama Senate nominee Roy Moore on Monday, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said that the president wants people in the Senate who support his agenda. Are other Republicans confident that Moore would vote with the president or the party if elected? No, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anything, he's probably more loyal to President Trump than he is to Mitch McConnell. And while some may not think that's a difference, uh, there is a distinction between the two. If the president's pushing for something that runs counter to what Mitch McConnell would like, and that has happened in the past, you could expect that perhaps more would be on the president's side. But remember, the president didn't endorse Roy Moore during the Republican primary in this race. He went with the incumbent, Luther Strange, who has since lost. And the president, of course, hasn't weighed in, at least not on camera, regarding Roy Moore. And today you saw Kellyanne Conway, that White House advisor, step out and suggest that keeping a Republican in that seat benefits eventual placement of a conservative justice on the Supreme Court and other GOP priorities. That line of argument began last week with the governor of Alabama, among others, who was suggesting, look, I may not agree with his behavior here, but it's more important that Republicans keep this seat. That's a modified version of the sales pitch that Donald Trump was making to voters last fall after the allegations that surfaced in that Access Hollywood tape and amid all the other questions about his temperament and his behavior. He said, look, you may not like me, but you know that I'm going to appoint conservatives like Antonin Scalia to the Supreme Court. Hillary Clinton wouldn't do that. It appears that worked when one in five voters showed up at the polls on Election Day and said the Supreme Court was a top concern. So it may be here that Republicans realize in Alabama now, and word may have gotten to the White House, that it makes more sense to make that kind of an argument in hopes of drawing out Republican base voters to support more in the special election next month. Meanwhile, Ed, another woman has come forward accusing Minnesota Democratic Senator Al Franken of sexual misconduct. This time the accusation is from when he was a sitting senator. How could this factor into a potential ethics committee investigation into Franken's conduct? This is exactly what the ethics committee will be looking for allegations from people since he took office, plus potentially a review of what he did before he was in office. But it's certainly the allegations since he took public office that will be more of the focus. Uh, look, the Post hasn't verified this. I don't know if CBS has either. But it is a pretty detailed uh, description from the 2010 Minnesota State Fair when this accuser says that she met the senator, they posed for a photo, and he apparently grabbed her, 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 her rear end, frankly, in an mm -hmm. inappropriate way. And, you know, he issued a statement where he didn't necessarily deny it but said that he didn't recall it because he's taken tens of thousands of photos with people. And I'll say this, Elaine, it's a bit, it's growing a little curious to some of us here in Washington, and I, I suspect to his constituents back in Minnesota, that the senator hasn't been seen in public since these allegations were made last Thursday. You'll recall they came on Thursday morning. There were votes scheduled at noon that day in the Capitol. He did not show up to vote. He then snuck out of his office on Capitol Hill that night and has been holed up, we understand, at his daughter's home here in Washington ever since. I went by there today, I knocked on the door, and the daughter answered, and she said that she wouldn't be answering any questions, wouldn't say whether her father is there. But our hardworking colleagues who have been staking out the house 
uh, producers for the various television networks say that they've seen staffers come and go and believe that he's inside. Why he hasn't come forward to discuss this publicly, why he hasn't been seen, I think allows the questions to linger here and, and raise the possibility that more is coming. Now, same time, talk to Democrats today who said, look, as long as he consents to this ethics committee investigation and something far more serious doesn't surface, they don't see any reason for him to resign. But two progressive organizations, a group called Credo Mobile, who has about five million followers across the country, and the Indivisible Movement, which has grown in popularity among liberals across the country, today both agreed that he should resign given the most recent allegations. Mm. Ed, I want to ask you about Congress's legislative agenda. Republicans want to get tax reform done by the end of the year, and Democrats want to make sure dreamers are protected. You reported over the weekend in the Washington Post that there is tension between the White House Chief of Staff, John Kelly, and Latino Democrats over this particular issue of dreamers. Why is that? Well, remember, John Kelly until July was the Homeland Security Secretary, and over the course of the few months he was in office, met several times with Democrats behind closed doors to discuss how the administration was going to more aggressively enforce immigration policy, which meant rounding up undocumented immigrants uh, and, and deporting them and, and, and essentially not giving certain individuals a pass where the Trump administration believes previous administrations may have done so. They were heated meetings, and they involved Kelly coming face-to-face -face with the Congressional Hispanic Caucus to discuss these concerns. And as I detailed, there's some pretty heated exchanges between them when they were pushing him to support Democratic and bipartisan legislation to help these so-called dreamers, who are essentially younger people who came as children with their parents who crossed the border illegally or overstayed visas. And look, at, at the heart of the forthcoming fights over how to fund the government and whether to keep it open after the December 8th spending deadline could potentially be this issue. Because the way it's worked in recent years is when Republicans put up a spending bill, they often have to come asking for Democratic support because a few dozen fiscal conservatives in the House, maybe a handful in the Senate, withhold support, making it impossible for Republicans to pass it on their own by a simple majority. So that often means that Democrats get to say, all right, we'll vote for this, but here's what we want in return. And the leading issue that they're expected to push for, if it comes to that again, is the fate of these dreamers. You'll recall the president ended the program that defends them in September. The program will end in March, and he's told Congress, come up with a solution or the program is over. We'll see whether this becomes the central fight and whether the disagreement potentially forces a government shutdown. Well, it's really been a fascinating account, Ed, to read of these heated exchanges that you describe. Ed O'Keefe in Washington for us. Ed, always great to see you. Thank you. Take care, Elaine. Have a good Thanksgiving. Thanks. You too.